etc. And then they said, who is the land of Kaidar? And by the way, our Prophet, peace be upon him, he is descendants of Ishmael. And one of the sons of Ishmael is Kaidar. His eldest son or second son, they said. And they said in the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he is one of the descendants of Kaidar. Some scholars, be, you know, not said this. So he was the descendants of the Kaidar, the son of Ishmael. So that the people of Kaidar, so the Kaidar people who are the descendants of Ishmael who lives in Mecca, basically. They, they are not reside anywhere but Mecca, for example. Or maybe in the Arab Peninsula, some people, they will use the Arab Peninsula. But when it comes to the land of Salah, and the Salah is one of the mountains in Medina, and there is no link between them throughout the history except one person, that's what they have used, except one person who migrated from Mecca, who is a Kaidari person, migrated from Mecca, settled in the land of Salah, which is Medina, and that's why they say that's the only to say, there is no way to say except that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? That is the idea behind Isaiah 42. Yeah? Do I use this as a reference for me to believe that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is a Prophet of Allah? No, I don't use this. I'm listening to Shaykh. Yeah. I'm just writing something down yeah. Dora. I'm listening to now, now, for me, what is mentioned in the Quran is sufficient for me to know that he was sent by Allah. What is mentioned in the Quran, the things that is mentioned in the Quran, it is sufficient. Now, if I prove to you, there is no way beyond any doubt that there are certain things mentioned in the Quran. It is beyond any doubt to be said by someone who is like Muhammad peace be upon him in his time. Beyond any doubt, it has to be came from God. If I prove to you this, will you believe he is a prophet of God? If I said to you beyond any doubt, not something that could be, I'm talking to you, I'm saying to you beyond any doubt. That these things, it cannot be said except by someone who was sent by God. If I told you now this, will you accept that he's a prophet of God? If it's beyond any doubt, yes. like the, absolute, the absolute truth. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I follow truth. So. Good, good. That's what we want. We, want. we wanted to follow the truth. Me and you, we wanted to follow the truth. That's, that's, our, that's the purpose of Allah. We wanted to follow the truth. If the truth is here, we follow it. If the truth is there, we will follow it. Yeah. That's how we, this is in our nature. And you are... Uh, I assume that you are a clever man and you are someone who, who follow the truth, correct? Mm -hmm. And I said to you, if I prove to you beyond any doubt, meaning there is no way this information can be said by someone who is a literate person lived in the Arab Peninsula 1400 years ago. I will give example. Yeah, I will give example. You know, is he the brother he's going to drop you? Or? No, no, no. We're with someone that's okay. already, that's yeah. already left. But we now, uh, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's important. You know, oh, the I'm life just, is I'm important. Just, I know, I know, the I know, truth I know. is important. I know, I know, sorry. Now, firstly, the truth is important. The religion is important. Yeah, yeah. Our purpose of our life is important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, first of all, do you think 1400 years ago, people, they have access to the science that is only discovered recently. Do you think there could be a possibility someone would know certain things which was only discovered recently example now do you see that it's the clear sky do you see that star see that star do you see that star is it currently now a star there is it currently yeah a star there a star i believe so okay now do you know what the science say about this uh, maybe, that, are, maybe that the stars, stars are actually, like billions of years ago, is it? Let me tell you something. The science says as follows. You know, that light of the star, it takes millions of years to reach your eyes. Millions of years. Yeah? Not one year or two years. Millions of light years. Do you know what means light years? That the light has to travel in the space for millions of years to reach your eyes. Which means currently, when you look to that star, you are looking into the history, yeah? And that star currently now, while we are talking now, that star is not there. Maybe it turns into black hole, or because the universe is expanding, as you know, now that star is not in its position now. It's not there, yeah? We will discover this. After one million years, we will see what happened to that star if we stay here on Earth. The question is, Allah says in the Quran, 14, and this is, this, this, information it is discovered recently until people they start knowing about the space knowing about discovering the space etc and cosmologists scholars until they discovered what's happening in the space and then they came to this conclusion
sorry, you said a thousand years, yeah? It takes a thousand millions, millions, oh, millions, not, not thousands. Millions of years. Millions of light years, not one year, million of light years coming until it reaches our eyes. Now listen to this. God has said in the Quran, yeah? Oh. I will not make an oath by the positions of the stars. And it's a great oath, but you are not yet aware of this. So God has said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago that when Allah make an oath by something in the Quran, it shows you this something is worth to ponder, worth to understand, to reflect on. And Allah has used the term, the position of the stars. He didn't say the stars. So which means when you look to that star up, you are looking to the position of the star when the light departed from it millions of years ago. The question is to you, who taught Muhammad about this fact? Do you mind me asking, do you mind me, um, so the, the surah that's referring to, the one you just quoted, do you mind telling me? Here, surah al-waqi'ah. Sorry, I know the numbers. Al-waqi'ah, verse number 75. Al-waqi'ah, we'll get you the number of the chapter. Al-waqi'ah. Yeah, chapter number 56. 56 yes, 75. verse number. We we'll said to you, 75 and 76. This is actually one of the verses. I read it, I read it, I read it yeah. like five months ago. Yeah. When I was doing Salah. Yeah. And I read the verse. And so it, Allah and says, it came to me. Allah, فلا أقسم, I will not make an oath by the positions of the sun. Allah has used the term positions of the sun. And it's a great oath. But he, and it's a great oath if you would know about it. Now, Allah is saying to the Prophet وسلم, and the people of that time saying to them, if you would know about it, it's a great oath. It's a great thing. Now, the question is, who taught Muhammad about this fact, which is discovered only recently by the scientists and the people who are working the science? And adding to your information that when I told you that the stars are moving because the universe is expanding, we have another chapter in the Quran, we have another verse in the Quran saying, Allah says in the Quran as well, uh, that, uh, that uh, 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 we have created the heavens with the strength, with, with the hands, Allah has created it, and we are expanding. The question is, again, why Allah Azza wa again has used that about the expansion of the of the heaven, and we know when you say sama, everything that you see here, the, the, this, the, this what you see, this sky, everything. This is the first. This is the what Allah says in the Quran. This is the this is the heaven that we see, that it is the sama which Allah Azza has created, and Allah is expanding it. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? which only recently, these things are discovered recently. Now, can this be coincident? Let, let's assume it's a coincidence. We have another place in the Quran as well. And, and I, for example, can you tell me, have you been to the ocean? Yeah? What is the deepest point any diver could dive 1400 years ago? Can someone could dive deep in the ocean, reach there? Oh yeah, no, no, of course. Can someone know what's happening there? If someone said to you what's happening in the ocean and, it's covered, and it is discovered recently, do you think this, this wording came from him or came from God? It could be a sign as from God. Yeah. Okay. So God has said in the Quran that those who are away from the guidance of God, like someone who's deep in the bottom of the ocean, above him there is a wave. Above the wave there is another wave. Above the sea there is a cloud. Even if he took his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness upon darkness. Yeah? Here? You want? Allah says here. This is in Surah An Nur. Yeah? Surah An Nur, verse number, verse number 39 and verse number 40. Yeah? So Allah says, those who are disbelieving Allah Azza wa Jal, a'malum kasarabin, then their, their deeds they are like, uh, like something in the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, mirage. Yeah? Yeah? And Allah Azza wa has said, Aw ka dhulumat, the, the following verse is the, the verse that I'm talking about. Or like, like darkness, darknesses, fi bahra deep ocean, yeah? 
Above it, this darkness, the deep in the ocean, there is a wave. Min fawqihi mawj, and above the wave there is another layer of wave. Min fawqihi sahab, and above, above that there is a cloud. Yeah? Then Allah had al-sahab. Dhulumatun ba'duha fawqa ba'd. Darkness upon darkness. Itha akhra jayadahu lam yakad yaraha. If he took his hand, he will be unable to see it. The question is, who taught Muhammad about this? And I will tell you. People in the past, if, if there is a, cloud, a cloudy weather, when the, when the sunlight comes on earth, that nearly 40% of the, of, the, of the sunlight will be reflected back and only 60% will go through. This 60%, when there is a, a surface waves on the ocean, it will break the light. This is science. It breaks the light. And only half of that, barely half of that will go through. This, which, which went through, people used to appreciate, used to see the surface waves, no problem. But deep in the ocean, they discovered another type of waves that goes in another direction other than the direction of the surface waves, which they are called the sea current. Deep in the ocean, no one knows except recently. This is a discovery. And deep in the ocean as well, and that will break whatever remains from the light. And when it goes down deep in the ocean, that it is the absence of light. The question is, to the extent that you put your hand in front of your eyes, you will be unable to see it. In a time, people used to think the eye could see by itself. Quran says that the absence of light is the, is the cause that you cannot see the, the thing. The question is, who taught Muhammad about this? Family? Tell me. More? Allah has said in the Quran, the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother, how it is developed, the way that it is. The way that it is. Back then, I said it. Back then, says Allah, says in the Quran as well, like a blood clot, and this developed into like a leech, a leech, hanging leech. If you see even, look, it's look like a leech, it's this, 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 like this, and hang, and the leech, what does it do? It sucks blood, the same as the baby from the mother. And then it developed into like a bite, and this bite developed into bones, and this bones covered with the flesh, and then it became into a new creation. Who taught Muhammad about this? Tell me. I told you beyond any doubt. Now the question is to you. Do you, do you believe now he is a prophet of God? After what I told you. And there is many. There are many, by the way, in the Quran. Many in the Quran. The Quran is full of this. You think, you think we Muslims, in a time where the churches used to, anyone who believes in the gravity used to torture them and kill them and you know do all of these things. During that time, Islam, that, that they, 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 they were, subhanallah, that the scientists, they, they, they were giving the ability to develop their science and to understand this because God told us in the Quran to ponder upon the creation of God. In a time where the church, during the dark ages, what they used to do, the church, anyone, they, they executed people because they believe in gravity or they believe, even believe that the earth is round. At that time, people being executed for this. Can you imagine? And God has mentioned in the Quran as well, even about the round of earth, that God, الأرض بعد ذلك دحاها, make it like a dahiya, like, like an egg shape. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? Can you repeat that story? Allah says about the earth, والأرض بعد ذلك دحاها, and the earth, we made it like an egg shape. Who taught Muhammad about this? Do you think this word could come from, and he himself, anyone, if he did something, a search or something, will, pr will try to, you know, to give the bonus for himself, I did it, this is my research. He said, this is not from me, it's from God. In a time, people used to believe in all of these things. He could take advantage of the people. When the, when the eclipse happens, when the, after in the day where his son died, he had a son, he had three sons and they died young age, and the last son was, his name is Ibrahim. He died on the same day where the eclipse happens. The people, they start saying, the eclipse happens because the heavens is sad for the death of the son of the prophet. And then they said, uh, and then that's God wanted to give us a sign and all of this. He came out, he could take this advantage. He could take advantage of it. But he said, no, the eclipse of the sun and the moon, they are the signs of God. They don't have the eclipse because of the living or the death of anyone, including prophets or the children of the prophets of God. So he removed this misconception because he was sent by God. The question is to you, I prove to you, beyond any doubt, that he was a prophet of Allah. Beyond any doubt. And I said to you, is this beyond any doubt, to you? 
said, so you said, you said. Um, well, no, if, if what you're saying is completely accurate, I understand, I understand your position. I would like to just read up on some of this, what you said. No problem. That's I gave you, I gave you the references. And you did, and you did. I gave you the references, that, yeah. and I want you to open your mind and heart. Yeah. You think, you think we are not followers of Jesus? We are followers of Jesus, peace be upon him. But we don't ascribe him as God. We don't, you don't deal with him as God. God cannot be a flesh. In the Old Testament, it says God cannot be a flesh. How you want to make God a flesh? And you know, why God choose to be white? Don't you think there is something there? He chose to be white. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's completely. In terms of Israelites, who are they? We can't. Why God chose? You understand the point? I'll let you go on, go on. You see here, that means God will favor sir, but God has said. In every nation, God has sent a messenger. This is the justice of God. This is the justice of God. When God has said in the Quran, when there is no nation except Allah has sent messenger from amongst them. So that shows Allah is fair and just. Sent to the people in Africa, prophets and messengers. Sent to the people in India, prophets and messengers. People in China, Allah has sent prophets and messengers. To show that Allah is fair and just. And the final messenger was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him where his own companions from all around the world, people who were white, Arabs, black, they were, those are they were his companions, peace be upon him. And that, that shows this religion didn't come for the Arabs, but he was sent for everyone. That's why you find people from Africa who accepted Islam, people from all around the world accepted Islam. Why do you think is this? Why do you think is this? Don't you think there is a mighty power behind this to make those 1.8 billion people on earth accepting Islam and it increases on a daily basis. How is that? How is that? In a time where Muslims are weak and yet Islam is expanding and yet Islam, people accepting Islam more and more. Why would you say Muslims are weak? We are weak now. Look at us. Look at people. Anyone who has a free time will go and, 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 and you know, destroy some Muslim country, kill Muslims. That's what they have done. Even they make it as video games, whatever. But the point is, this is what happens. But even though yet Islam is strong because of the faith, not because of the Muslim, because of the faith is true, came from God. So that's the point. So that's why, my brother, I want you to open your heart. Don't think, I don't want you to think that we, we love Jesus, peace be upon him. We love him because he was sent by God. We believe in his miraculous birth. You don't find any religion on earth believes in the birth, in the virgin birth of Jesus, peace be upon him, except Muslims. Us, we are the only one who believes this. And we believe that he was, he was Allah, when Allah has created Jesus, as well, without a father, Allah created Adam with no father and mother. So if, the, if, the, if, the, if it's a miracle that Jesus was born with no father, Adam was born with no father and mother. If the resurrection of Jesus, as you said, as you say, it's a miracle. What about Elijah, who was resurrected? So you'll, you'll see these things happening. So if, you, if I wanted to use these sources, but yet I'm not using these sources, but I'm saying to you, in, uh, as a Muslim, Allah is able to do all of that. Allah is able to resurrect him. And he was saying, I will go to my father according to you, to and your father, my God and your God. And he said, the only true God is the father. What does that make him? So all of these things is for you to know that Jesus, if there is true word of Jesus, which is confirmed in the Quran, why the first manuscript that they found some patches of the Bible was 180 or 200 years after Jesus, correct? First thing that they found, patches, maybe one page or two pages, or half page. Written in which language? Tell me, tell me which language was, what was it? Huh? Remind me, remind me. Greek. Greek. Did Jesus speak Greek? Did he speak Greek? Do you believe he speaks Greek? Do you think he speaks Greek? I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm here to listen. Okay, I will tell you. Jesus, and I, I spoke to someone, he said, Oh, of course he speaks Greek. I said, How did he speak Greek? He said, He spoke to someone, his name is Anton or Anthony, and his, he was, that's a Greek name. I said, What was Anthony? He said, He was from Israelites, children of Israel. I thought, Okay. So someone from the children of Israel, and Jesus, Jesus talking to him in the Greek language, where both of them are Hebrew, they speak Hebrew. Why he chose to speak to them in a different language? Let alone that Greek language was 300 years before Jesus was in the area. So, and if you wanted to use the contemporary language, Jesus spoke Hebrew, which is the language of his people, because he's Israelite. 
And Jesus as well could be speaking Aramaic because that was the language of that time. I will understand this. And even to, he, that he spoke to one of the Roman officials. He, when he spoke to this Roman official, that those spoke Latin. Why he need to choose to speak Greek? Uh, you, you see the point? So that shows there is something there. There is something wrong there. So why they didn't preserve the language of Jesus? How he wrote, how he said, how he spoke to the people. Why they didn't wrote it? The way that he spoke. If it was the true from God, if it was the word of God, they will preserve it as it is. That's why you don't find it. You don't find it in Hebrew. You don't find it in, the, in, in Aramaic. Even nowadays they are doing work to translate from Latin into Aramaic, back translation. You see the point? Because they didn't find it. But where the Quran for the last 1400 years? Muslims, even people, where are you from by the way? Originally? Oh, Nigeria. Huh? Nigeria. Nigeria. You know Nigeria, for example, you'll find millions of Muslims, children as age of six and seven and eight, they memorize the Quran from cover to cover in Arabic language. Cover to cover. Tell me, there is now, while I'm talking to you, 15 million people on earth, they memorize the Quran from cover to cover with vowels, the way that it is. Can this apply to the Bible? Tell me. It's quite a big book. You think the Quran is a small book? Let alone, let alone that the Quran, the people memorize it in its original language. People in Nigeria, they memorize it in Arabic, where they can speak Arabic. 90% of those who, they can speak Arabic. 90%. Of those who memorize the Quran, they can't speak Arabic. They do speak, but they memorize it in Arabic language as it was. Do you know why? For two things. Firstly, because Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ We have made the Quran easy to be remembered. And is there anyone to remember? And Allah Azza wa said in the Quran, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُ فِي اخْتِلَافِكَ If it came from other than Allah, you'll find a lot of dispute about it. That's why Allah made it easy for the people to memorize it and to remember it and to know it even now. And the second thing people wanted to be amongst as the Prophet peace be upon him, he said the person will be his status in, the, in Jannah and Paradise according to his memorization of the Quran. So that's why all of these ones, Arabs and non-Arabs, they compete to memorize the Quran. And I will tell you non-Arabs defeated the Arabs in memorization of the Quran, especially in Africa. So that's how it is, my brother. That is what it is. And I want you to open your mind and heart. This book, this book, it cannot be protected and preserved and memorized and looked after and people putting efforts to explain the Quran, even non-Arabs who came and they became scholars of Islam. Why? Because they admire this book. They knew it came, they knew this book came from Allah. They come from the true, the one true God. Allah means the one God. That's, that's why people have, they accepted Islam. That's why people, they followed Islam. And that's why Islam favors the people of knowledge over than others. So that's why you'll find Muslim, Muslim scholars from all around the world, Persian, African, from all around the world. We admire them, we respect them, we honor them. Because of what? Because of the knowledge that they have. That is the key thing, my brother. This, this, yeah. This did I explain to you? You did. That was a good explanation. I really do appreciate it, honestly. May Allah, may Allah guide you, firstly, to the truth and increase you in all goodness. And sincerely go tonight. Go. Yeah, yeah. Go home. And and, and take a shower, just take a shower, okay, take a shower. Just, just say, God, I know you're there. Guard me to the right path. Do you know how many times we, re we recite this? Asking God to, to guide us to the right path. We do it at least 17 times a day. Because guidance, three types. Guidance to show you the path, showing you the path. Secondly, leading you to the path. Thirdly, keeping you firm on that path. That's why we ask Allah, in every single day when we pray, we pray five times a day. And the, when you count the number of the units, minimum 17 times a day we recite the first chapter of the Quran, which is Surah Al-Fatiha. And in it, there is a key verse in the Quran, guide us to the right path. Do you have a Quran with you? Do you have a Quran? I do actually. actually yeah? Actually do. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it too. No problem. Prostrate to God, prostrate yeah. on the floor like Jesus did. Jesus would post, prostrate on, on the ground in the garden of Gethsemane. So just to like him and, and, and ask guidance. Thank you. See, well done. Yeah, I'll be here again. Yeah, uh, if he, when he said Jesus, worship the one who Jesus worshipped, which is the one God. So ask God, the God of Jesus.
to guide you. And the guide of Jesus and Abraham and all the prophets of God. All right, my brother. Look after yourself. All right, look after yourself. Jazakallah khair. We ask Allah, wa yak, amin, wa yak. Allah barik Allah hafadh kalam. Jazakallah khair. We ask Allah to guide him. Alhamdulillah. So some people like this. Wallahi, that's why we're here. We sometimes come here for people who wanted to know about Islam. They wanted to learn about Islam. Not those people who just came to attack Islam. We are here as well to educate people about Islam. When someone came to know what is Islam. And that's what we want. We want the people Gen to know. People. And genuinely, they wanted to learn about Islam. Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah to make us that op like, uh, like to open their eyes to, uh, to, to learn about Islam and to make them follow the guidance of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Allah dharik. Allah hafadak rabbi. Akramatumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters. And, and by the way, as well, just wanted to mention about inshallah to subscribe for my channel inshallah ta'ala i started a channel which gives reminders inshallah it's called sh Taraun. so please subscribe to the channel inshallah and uh, we wanted to share reminders inshallah ta'ala the channel is just only dedicated for reminders inshallah ta'ala and i wanted this just to give you reminders about important things from the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu and some as well stories from the people of the of the knowledge inshallah ta'ala jazakumullah khair all my brothers and sisters may Allah reward you and bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa